physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. I'm going to try to land this plane on this tiny helipad. Hey guys, look what Cup Crafters just dropped off. A carbon cup. It's absolutely awesome the way it is, but they asked me to play with it a little bit for something really exciting. Okay, so uh, I'll try another one. Okay, sounds good. I'll let them know. <laughs> Dart is on bullseye. Yeah. <laughs> we made history, man. We made history. <laughs> So this is not just landing in a small, small spot. This is landing in a small spot with wind doing magical things that are hard to predict. And uh, to have him hit that target on spot, let me tell you how good he did on spot and you guys can take a picture of it. We needed him to land before a white circle line, but not before the edge of the building. And we said, hey, if we can have our perfect landing, like the perfect one, I wanna see you put black marks between the two white marks, the outer ring off the building and the inner white line. He hit exactly in the dead center. And so when you say bullseye, I know people think it's the carbon cup sitting on the H right here. No, it is those two black marks in a spot this big. That is on target, on spot. That is the bullseye sitting right there, those black tire marks. Months ago, you showed up in Spanish Fork, Utah, and flew the little beast we made just for today. What was your impressions the first time you flew it, and now on top of this pad? First time I flew it was like, wow. <laughs> Let me go back two years more. <laughs> okay. When we started to think about the project, and uh, I remember it was still COVID time, and uh, I was sitting at home watching your videos uh, with Scrappy, and you know, going back to the Draco times. And I was watching your YouTube channel and I was thinking, this guy is so fucking cool. Ah, thanks. <laughs> and, uh, and now we are working with you and we accomplished something huge. So, yeah, the, to, to go from sitting on my sofa watching your YouTube channel to be working with you to accomplish something great. To, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's so awesome. Oh, it's cool. All right, so guys, um, that video will come out. We're going to show you some of the build, his first flight first time he engaged nitrous to do some of the testing for what he needed on top of this building today a lot of power <laughs> yeah we as always all projects there's challenges technical challenges and then things you can predict things you can't predict coming into here we knew we needed to build a plane that was lighter than any other cub crafters carbon cub ever built we knew we needed to give him more horsepower than has ever been done 
we didn't know the technical specifications of how much room we needed to land in and take off at what density altitude. Those are all easy things. It's data, it's numbers, it's physics, math, engineering. That's what it takes to get here. The things we can't predict, the wind, the weather, the changes. We have a very narrow window to accomplish this. Yesterday was a little bit rough. Tell me how it was for you. I'll tell you how it was for me yesterday. Yeah, definitely yesterday, uh, the weather goes in play according to the rules. <laughs> Yeah, with the crosswind we had, it was really, really challenging. Uh, that was, yeah, I wouldn't like to go any further than <laughs> what we did yesterday. Look forward to the images. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was really good call to abort when we did abort yesterday. Yeah. And uh, yesterday afternoon we tried again. Then there was no wind, too much wind in the morning, not enough wind in the afternoon, so many challenges. Yeah. But today, perfect. Oh, it's perfect. Now, he says today was perfect. Let's be clear. It was, a, it was only perfect for one minute. L literally, we had, I, I don't know, we should call this wind landing on the Burj Al Arab or one minute wind. It was predicted to be perfect. There's no wind right now, zero. There was no wind when we got up this morning. It was supposed to be 10 knots. We watched it sneaking up as he came. And I'm telling you, while he was doing his touch and goes and got ready and felt good, he was coming around for one more and the wind snuck up to seven, bumped eight back to seven. And uh, I just got on the radio and said, we have seven, seven not stable. How did, how did you feel? How did you react on that approach? Yeah, I think we were playing like on another go around, like a practice approach. And then once I heard you saying stable seven, I was like, that's, that's our chance. Let's do it, let's do it. So I climbed up, did the steeper approach, felt perfect so as soon as I was, coming to the edge of the helipad, I just closed the flaps, locked the brakes, did a little bit of tap dance, not to rise the tail too much, not to scare anyone. After the tap dance, <laughs> euphoria, euphoria. Yeah. <laughs> you could hear everyone screaming and yeah, oh. the, the dart hit the bullseye. So. Yeah, it was awesome. And so for me, I'm on the radio talking to Luke and we have been on the radio nonstop, off and on testing in Spanish Fork here in Dubai at different airports, just going through, hey, do a go around. I want you to land faster. I want you to land slower. I want you to come flat. I want you to come high. Going through all the different possible techniques we may need on this pad, depending on the winds that were coming. So we're getting a lot more comfortable on the voice. And quite frankly, I just love to hear his voice on the radio. And it's just, it's just a team uh, during all the training. So it was really hard for me watching you come in, knowing that we had talked about, we might do uh, another go around, but we also had a very specific guideline that we needed to follow. And that was guys, even if we are setting up to do a planned missed approach, if we've already done our safety runs, which we had, we said, if you're coming up for a planned go around, but it's so absolutely perfect, you have to take it because it's not always going to come up perfect. Every time you think it's going to be the right time, the wind changes and it's also the other way. So we had a plan in place if the wind became good to just take it. And we also had for the safety of Luke and for his mind to be clear, a plan that I cannot tell him do it this time. It's Luke's call. Luke is a professional. He is the best at what he does. And uh, my job is to just give input. So on this next path around, I really can't say, Luke, go for it. But inside, I am screaming, seven, eight, we got it, we got it, go, yeah, go, yeah, go. Yeah. Like, I am like energy all out to the world to try and tell him, take it, take this time. And, uh, and so I, I got on the radio and I just said, I tried to give confidence in it, just seven not stable. Like, but what I was really saying was right now, because I saw the most perfect, stable, vertical path approach on the money and and uh oh, I, I don't know if you heard me through my my energy or in my voice at seven knots but when i saw you get 10 10 12 feet out i knew it i was like he's on my page we're in sync he is gonna do it i was already cheering inside this is the one and then you took it I, uh, as soon as the flaps closed i was sure we can make it yeah oh my gosh for those of you watching this I can't emphasize it enough. It's two years in the making. 
so many safety procedures. Setting this up, just a glimpse, and you'll never really grasp how difficult this is. We cleared the beaches of some of the highest end resorts on the planet, everyone off out of the water for a safety landing for Luke. We had caterpillars grooming the beach so there wouldn't be a sand castle in his way to flip him over if he had to do an emergency landing. We had fire trucks, we had boats, scuba divers, scuba divers geared up, ready to jump in the water. So boats, divers, fire department, the base of the tower, outside, by the beaches, on the beaches, the safety parameters we went in to make this, this was a unbelievable task that I would have never wanted to do by myself. This guy made me want to do it because he's a good guy. Cub crafters calling me, asking me if I would build the little beast for this event. And then the entire team, the Red Bull team is unbelievable. Yeah. Well it, Unbelievable. Once you mention it, I have to say that the team of people we've been working for the last two years, we wouldn't do it without them. I yeah. know how to fly, you know how to build planes, but without those guys, not, none of those would happen. So yeah. I'm such as, I'm going to be on all the videos. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I take the fame, but I want to thank everyone who's standing behind the cameras and who's been working on it because we pulled it off perfectly. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So. Uh, a shout out to Red Bull, um, just from my heart. I know it's from Luke. We've talked about this at dinner. Um, the entire team, it's not like a, a, it's a big company, but it's a big family. And everybody I have met, everybody in the entire department on a regular basis said, guys, it doesn't matter if we spend two years on this, if it's not good, abort, cancel, close the door, go away. It was on every single safety meeting, safety briefing, and it wasn't just words. It was sincere, heartfelt love of a family member telling them, hey, be if safe. things aren't right, be safe. We don't care about the money. We don't care about anything. All we care about is everyone landing, coming home safe. And uh, fortunately, after a hard day of rough winds, then no winds, and a morning of one minute of wind, we pulled it off. I, I'm so blown away. I'm so excited. What a great timing. What a great time. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Back to work.